Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Lionel. Hey, I'm your host for LT Productions, and you are watching I Watch You Watch. Um, we are covering The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Uh, this is Season 13, Episode 6. I appreciate everyone for coming to my channel. Uh, please like this video and also share it. Uh, please go on and, and subscribe to this channel if you are enjoying the content. And also leave your comments below about the episode and also my commentary if you feel like you need to. Okay, so we're going to get into this. It's a, a interesting episode in an interesting fight that's happening. <laughs> and it's Crystal and Kyle. It's hard to tell if Crystal is working or genuinely concerned. <laughs> but whatever. I'm just glad that Sutton understands that Kyle is not a real friend of hers. But we start off the episode, um, Dorit meets Crystal in Kyle's driveway. They're coming to meet her. They go on inside, and Kyle says that she needs a business manager because she's so swamped with this and that. Da, 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 da. Um, Dorit was like, well, I do have a business manager. Kyle's more like just making sure that certain stuff is being paid or whatever. Dorit overspends while the, the business manager is always calling her and saying, you know, lay off of spending, you know. Um, and most of the time she either answers or she doesn't. <laughs> Um, they, Crystal opens up with the, you know, um, I did see that you and Garcelle did talk last night at the thing, at the movie screening, and she said, yeah, um, she felt like it was the right thing to do to apologize for making her feel bad. It kind of feels like it's a but, or maybe I want it to be a but, but it's like, I get Garcelle's side, and then I can also get Dorit's side on this matter. I don't know. If apologizing was the best thing that she had to do. But in order to move forward, maybe she thought that this was the best thing to do. And as I explained in my other videos, it's kind of hard to tell someone, I'm not over this. After a year. And they don't even have a solution or even want it at this point. When need to come up with a way to help you to start trusting them again. Like, what do I need to do? Because I could do something and then that could piss you off even more. It's like, help me help me you if we're going to have to go down this this route. And it just feels like you're holding me hostage and I can't, and I thought I was free, <laughs> you know? And then on Gar Garcelle's end, you know, you guys did do something. And to me, I felt like you ex accepted the apologies too fast because there's no way <laughs> because of how they acted. And it was like, oh, I'm so sorry. But it wasn't, you know, that there was no remorse. It's just like, I seen it on TV and let me apologize for it. And I seen seen it on TV, seen how social media was responding to it, and then oh, I don't want to look a certain way. Let me apologize. Oh, so then they get on the, the topic of Sutton. Kyle feels like that she acts loopy and also drunk. Dorit co-signs on it. Crystal, she's saying, I'm having trouble gauging exactly what's going on, but that's how you are in every setting <laughs> with everything until it's about race. It's just like you sit in a corner and you just sit and watch everything go down. You have no thoughts. You have nothing in your head to add anything to the show. It's episode six and nothing's going on with you. <laughs> uh, anyways, you know, as Kyle is still trying to um, label Kyle as this, like, or Sutton as this drunk, um, Crystal and her confessional is like, I, I, I don't understand why Kyle is trying to act like she can say who's drunk and who's not because all of a sudden you've come off the bottle. I mean, that's a good comeback, but you didn't say that to her face. Okay, so we meet with uh, Sutton and Garcelle. Um, they talk about how they was able to clear the air about certain things with Kyle. We tried to, at least. Um, Sutton says that she's more worried about Kyle despite how he, if she may even treat her, it, it's she notices different things about Kyle, the different, the exercising, all this other stuff that's going on. And then she said that she noticed the sapphire ring. She wasn't wearing her regular wedding band. Um, and Sutton says, you know, I don't care about the rumors that are going on. Is Kyle okay? That's what she says. <laughs> I don't know yet, Sutton, because I know you're switching up on Kyle and do your job. And producer's about to lead you on the right way so that you can do your job <laughs> and stir this pot and let's see what's going on with Kyle. Because Kyle is very defensive and is not really saying much. And now she's trying to make you look like you're a, belligerent, a belligerent fool, a drunk, basically. 
and you got some type of mental issues going on. Um, Garcelle was like, you think that that's like a I'm sorry gift? Because there are rumors out there. You're making headlines, and then all of a sudden, you think you're kind of trying to act like she don't know what the show's about. When she is the force multiplier on this show. All right, so Erica, she meets with her new publicist. The old... <laughs> Erica's trying to say it so politely. The old publicist, who was known or named as one that leaked the story last year for um, Kathy, has been fired. He says that, you know, we are no longer doing business together, but we are still friends. Ma'am, you fired that joker. You knew what, what happened. And that's another thing as to why I'm trying to figure out how Erica and Kyle just became so chummy so quickly. But whatever, whatever. Um. Anyway, she has this new publicist and they are really trying to rebrand. They know that things are rough because of everything that did happen and how she behaved and all that good stuff, you know. Does anyone want to work with me? You know, the publicist said that they'll be working hard. Um, even if they're not willing as of right now, maybe just have a meeting just to see what's out there and who will, because she wants to tour, sing and all that good stuff. And this one wants to get into good graces. Um, the publicist says it's it would be great for you to take an inner look in yourself right now and reflect. And she says, that's what I've been doing. And I'm taking accountability for me, despite what my husband may have done and, and all of that good stuff. So we we get a backlash of her apologizing to different people. All right, so this was a good scene that's coming up with Garcelle and Jax. Um, Garcelle says that she's being a lot more patient with Jax. Jax likes to uh, talk out uh, situations. Jade is different. He's not the same type of independent person that this one is. And he just, she wants to hear him out a little bit more. Um, she does say that, you know, when you did say what you said about me, um, about what you needed from me a couple of months ago or a couple of years ago, it did hurt my feelings. They they did talk that out and they ended up talking about him knowing about him da his dad having an affair. And it surprised Garcelle so bad because she did not know that they knew. And he kept it a secret. He said that he's known since um, he was at, he was eight. Um, he said he got curious and ended up finding the information that he needed. He says he doesn't hold anything against dad or his mom, but he knows it is what it is. Um, Garcelle goes back to say that there was one confrontation that she had in front of the children, but they were still strapped in car seats. So I, I guess maybe on down the line, um, I guess it would, Jack, Jack just took it to heart to just find out what really happened. They were talking about the email or, or there was something that was sent and Garcelle got a hold of it and she thought it was about her and the family, like, I love you. Then to find out that I was actually sending it to another person. I said, wow, wow, wow. So Garcelle was, is upset about that internally, like, because they have spent a lot of time trying to guard them from it and protect them from it. She don't want a bad image. I'm like, Garcelle, you ought to look at this as just really praise to God because he did take it right. He did not act out. And obviously he forgave his father and loves you both. So at least you know how he would take take it if you had told him like now or in the future. He handled it well. That's a good man. A, I won't say man. A young man coming into being a man. Very mature. Looks like he is beyond his years. Um, Garcelle says, you know, you're helping me to grow. Some of the things you don't think that some are that your children or anyone that you know as a loved one can handle, can possibly really handle it if you just tell them the truth. I love that scene. So we move on to Kyle and Morgan Wade. Um, they're quite chummy. I'm hearing that Kyle and Morgan are talking every day, well, as they said in the scene. Um, they're at getting a tattoo. And the tattoo artist was asking Kyle, you know, how did you guys meet? And Morgan says, well, we, she stalked me. Um, Kyle says that she was listening to Morgan's music one day and just really fell in love with the music and was doing a bunch of stuff on Instagram where she's uh, commenting on different Instagram stories and things of that nature, trying to get her attention. Now, either Kyle is trying to troll us or she is really swooning over this girl, woman, I'll say. No, no, no. <laughs> You're not attracted to just her music. I think you're attracted to her. 
So basically now she's getting the tattoo and the guy is doing it and Morgan is holding her hand. Where's Teddy at? <laughs> I don't want Teddy to come back, but I thought y'all were pretty tight. But this woman has been, in, it's to the point where she's holding her hand during a, a, a procedure, a cosmetic procedure. Okay, Kyle, you can say y'all just friends, but something going on. Then we switch over to uh, Kyle and Mauricio. Mauricio is writing a book and wanting Kyle to read it. She hasn't, she's giving excuses like, I want the whole paperback. I can't really read off of a computer. Well, it's not gonna be a paperback until at least the editors go through it. But if he wants you to read, that's something that's precious. And you seem to have just clocked out and just don't really care too much about his feelings, in my opinion. Either he has done something to you that has just shut you off from him because it looks like you basically have moved on. How things are being set up. Sorry. <laughs> Kyle. Okay. Um, the producer's like, why didn't you read it? She's like, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. Okay. So Sutton meets with that matchmaker that we saw a couple episodes ago. And she's invited Dorit over to help her in choosing matchmakers. Um, Sutton, PK done caught a stray. Sutton says, um, look, I invited Dorit over. It's like, if Dorit found PK, it, I, I know that I d should not be that picky in finding a mate. I said, well, I've, I have asked that since I've known about Dorit and PK, like, aesthetically, I'm like, mm, okay. <laughs> like, th they don't seem like the couple that you would normally say, ooh, okay, they look cute together, you know? No offense. <laughs> just, just, it's like, I, I've always thought it was odd. They obviously do get along. Um, they compliment each other when you hear all their conversations and all that. So, hey, she likes it. I love it. So, while they're picking these uh, guys, Sutton's being judging about attire, and Tariq is like, I don't think you need to judge anybody's attire. I mean, she goes on first date, a sweater with a cat on it. <laughs> so, Sutton's trying to come to the place where she's not being judgmental in regards to that. You know, just get out there and start dating, in my opinion. All right. So everyone's getting ready for um, Kyle's party. So while Kyle is getting ready, she calls Morgan. And we find out that Morgan got a tattoo also. And Kyle was helping Morgan. Kyle was putting on the tattoo on Morgan. So, okay. So they're talking, 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 talking. She ended up losing time. <laughs> she didn't even know what time it was. That's how much that they were on the phone together. All I know is that producers, they're setting you up, Kyle. <laughs> Whether it's true or not, it looked like there's some truth to your something is going on past friendship with this woman. Um. So, of course, the, the party is about to start and people are rolling in. Um, we see that uh, the morally corrupt Faye Resnick has arrived. Um, we got uh, Justin uh, from E! News. Now, shout out to Justin. I just want to know, may I speak? I kind of always, he's a, a nice looking gentleman. So shout out to Justin. Um, Cynthia Bailey, she done came over to the West Coast. Hey, Cynthia, from the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, we meet the newest housewife that has made an appearance finally in, in episode six, Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie um, is married to an ex-NFL player. And we find out that Kyle is lives right down the street from her. Um, she said that she hasn't known her that much, but she likes her a lot, Kyle says. Uh, um, while she's talking, just to, I guess, find a little bit about Anne, we find out that she's an Aries and she was born on April 17th. That's the same day that Big Kathy was born. So that was definitely a connection. So obviously, Anne-Marie is going to be buddy-buddy with Kyle. I can tell you that up front. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. So as Kyle is still waiting for more guests, Kyle brings up to Katie Resnick about, or Faye Net Resnick about how Sutton is and trying to ask all these questions about uh, why I'm exercising and all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's not nice. It seems like Kyle was gathering in the troops to be on her side because obviously that there was going to be a confrontation. That's my opinion. So Kyle ended up saying that I invited Denise Richards and Camille. <laughs> okay, so Camille and Faye Resnick does not get along. Camille, former grammar, Meyer now. So it's going to be interesting, and Faye did react like, ooh, let's see what happens here. Um, 
Crystal does know Amory, and the most that we see is that uh, she's a mutual friend uh, between Crystal. Uh, Crystal, Crystal knows a lot of mutual friends. She knows of her, but they don't really know each other. But basically, she does know that Amory talks a lot and is nosy, but you don't know her. Okay, all right, <laughs> all right. So the party begins, and there's a lot of edibles that are being passed around. Um, Denise is congregating with ones. They have arrived. <laughs> um, um, Denise said, you know, she smoked weed twice, but it just wasn't something for her. Everything seems pretty well. I thought, I know that there's going to be friction between her and Erica at some point, but um, I guess not, not right now. Um, so Sutton asked to talk to Kyle. She has arrived and they just want to just clear the air again, <laughs> you know, and Kyle tells her, you know, there's some things that have been going on personally in my life. Uh, that has kind of shaken me. And she even said, you know, that day that you came by that I was off. And she says that her ex-husband has got a promotion and he's moving overseas. And he was demanding Sutton to move overseas uh, so that he so that he won't be separated from his son. Da, 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 da. Of course, Sutton does not want to do that. It looks like she was cowarding down. And it looks like this man has really kept her oof, really bound. Even though I think they've been divorced, what, for seven years or so? I, or maybe um, sooner than that. I can't remember, you know. And Kyle's like, so what's the issue? You know, um, it looks like the, her son is going to be left with her and you're going to be getting more money. And she said, well, that's not the total thing. I have to fight him in court in order to get all of this stuff. Kyle's not seeing the importance of everything. And she feels like Sutton uses all of these things to make excuses of when she wants to act out. And uh, she also used, you know, when um, a Sutton acted out differently or reacted differently when she found out that uh, Dorit got robbed. It's like, oof. So they're going back and forth and all this good stuff and and Sutton's trying to be still a friend. <laughs> uh, and Kyle's just not acting very friendly to her. Da, 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 da. And Kyle's like, well, what's really going on with you? And then Sutton says, what's going on with you? <laughs> you know? Um, at this point, Crystal comes in. Um, it just seems like uh, you don't want to talk about yourself and what's going on with you. Da, 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 da. Well, at this point, they need Kyle to come back in or whatever. Sutton sits down and they ask, okay, where's the host at? And they said, in denial about something, because it got heated back there. So Kyle immediately comes to the table and they start bickering again. Of course, at this point, Fres Faye, ne Faye Resnick has jumped in and all this good stuff. And Marie starts coming in because Sutton won't get to the bottom of what she really wants to ask, ask Kyle. It is basically, is anything going on in your marriage? I already told you there was something going on in my marriage. Da, 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 da. Like, We've had a tough time, blah, 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 but that's about it. Da, 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 da. You know, you bought that ring. What do you mean? Did he give you a new ring? No, I bought it for myself. So I'm basically saying, is that ring for, did he do something bad or he cheated? Just like the rumors are saying. She's like, I bought it for myself. He didn't have to buy me anything. Da, 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 da. I cannot believe you actually said all this. Da, 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 da. There's such deflection out of Kyle. She does not want to answer questions. And Sutton didn't want to be straightforward. Garcelle had to step in for a second. Um, when Kyle finally answered the answer, the questions, no, that's not what happened. I just bought the ring. I like the ring. As far as how I exercise and all that and why I don't want to drink alcohol, that's just my business. And Sutton was like, okay, you answered it. You answered it. And I'm satisfied with those answers. <laughs> and Faye, Faye was like, that's not the way to answer. It's like, well, do you see how she's answering to me? <laughs> so, so it's uh, really Sutton got Kyle's number, but Sutton's not being bold enough yet. I just need you to be direct. Be direct as much as you were when you were um, in Las Vegas. That's all I got to say. So she ends up saying, you know, I cannot, uh, Kyle ends up saying, I cannot have alcohol and then be feeling uh, uh, depressed the two days later. Right now, I can't handle all of that. Or I can't, or I can't afford to do all that. I was like, oh. 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 Well, it's time for honesty, Kyle. And I think you're going to be trying to escape any way that you can and not really say anything. That's all I do have. <laughs> what did you guys think of this episode? It was crazy. I want to Sutton to just be more tougher with, with certain things and quit getting in your feelings. Question that lady and let's get it going. Stir this pot with this girl that's going to try to run over you to shut you down. All right. Again, I thank you for coming to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not as of yet. Share this video and also like this video and leave your comments below. Until the next one. Peace.